Hi, and welcome to another installment of Math Basics, Mr. Besh. Today we talk frequency table. My goal and objective today is to teach you, number one, what it is, how you read it, and more importantly, how you use it. A frequency table is usually created from a simple question. The question could be as easy as yes or no, or it could be asking something in particular in which you want something, a single piece of data from it. When you look at a frequency table, what you end up having here is you have three columns. The first column is basically about the question that you're asking. The second column that you have is a representation of you writing down the data that you're collecting. Last but not least, a lot of you will notice the third column and say, wait a second, that's the same as the second column. You're right. But all we just did was simply write it out as numbers to make it a little bit easier to read. So let me present the scenario that you see here. The question that is being asked is obviously, how many pets do you have in a household? What you're doing is you're surveying people. You can survey people anywhere you want. People walk by you and say, hey, could I please ask you a question? Could you tell me how many, I'm doing a survey for school here. I'm doing a math experiment using data. Could you tell me how many pets you have in your household? And then the person would respond to you. Now notice these are the responses. Four people here said that they have zero pets. Six people here said that they have one pet. Five people said that they have two. Three people said that they have three pets in their household. And last but not least, two people said that they have four pets. Now, one of the things, the questions that they're asking here is they're saying, how many people were surveyed in this table? How many people are we talking about surveyed? All right. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and take each of these in the frequency, and you're going to get a sum. And that means you're going to add them all up. When you add them all up, you get 20. Now, that's going to be a very important number that we're going to use, especially when we're calculating any types of probabilities or percents. Okay? So that's the scenario. That's how you read this graph. And that's how you translate essentially a frequency table. So let's look at some applications that could be asked or questions that could be asked from a frequency table. My first one's an easy one. It's talking about the range. The range of what? Number of pets. Well, you know range is the biggest number minus the smallest number. So four minus zero is just plain old four. Questions like these, if you know the vocabulary, are very simple to answer. But the key is knowing the vocabulary. And a lot of you know, that's basically a lot of the middle school math. It's just knowing vocabulary of what you have. Second question, the mean. Now, we know the mean is the average. And to calculate an average, you have to add up all of your data. So here you go. I listed all of your data for you from left to right. Sometimes students will make a mistake here because they'll leave out the zeros. You cannot leave out the zeros. Remember, four people said they have zero pets. So every person in my survey needs to be represented. Okay? If you look, you end up having, and I count all of these going across here, you have 20 values. So when I go one by one and I add them up, 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and I go all the way across here, I'm going to get 33 as a sum. And I divide it by all the people surveyed, and when I'm all said and done, I get my mean, which is our mathematical term fancy for average. That's basically that. Piece of cake, right? So now, now they're hitting us with this probability term. All right, well, we know probability. And they tell us they want us to write it as a fraction. Another good one, right? Because we know probability can be written as a fraction. Sometimes they can ask us to write it as a percent. But the process is exactly the same way. Anytime you have to do a percent or a probability as a fraction, you're starting out the same way. What do you need to know? 
You need to know how many people you were talking about in the first place. Because the how many people part is the total. And the total is always the bottom of your fraction. Now, what's the question directing us at? What nugget or piece of information do they give us in the problem that's going to represent our top number? And now what happens is they say, a person with one pet. All right. Well, now take a look. Because one pet is right here. And how many people are we talking about? Six of them. So now six out of the 20 people surveyed have one pet. Now we got to remember this, lowest terms. So now anytime you see a fraction where the top and bottom number are both even, you can divide them both by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And voila. We have our probability as a fraction in lowest terms. 3 out of every 10. Pretty easy stuff. The key, remember what I said. The key to all of this was that total. That total. Because now, most commonly... Frequency tables usually ask questions associated with probabilities, but here's the big one. Da, 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 percents. Most of the time that you see this, you're going to be asked to find a percent. And again, the most important aspect is 20. Because when you have to create a percent, you need to build a fraction first. This question says we want to find which part of this graph represents people that have three or fewer pets. All right. Well, we got to add them up. We got to take this group here and this group and this group and this group. It means three or less. So now we're talking about that four groupings right there. And when I add them all up, that's 18 out of 20. This is my first step here for getting a percent. Get the fraction. Now, what does this mean? Well, we take the top number here, and we divide it by the bottom number here, and we get a decimal. And that is my second step. Last but not least, i got to take my decimal and multiply it by 100. And when I take 0 0.9 times 100, I get my answer, which is just plain old 90%. Now, this is the most common type of question that you usually see that's associated with here the frequency table. Last but not least, I got another one just like this, right? So now it's asking me for another percent here. But this time, that represents who have more than two pets. All right. Well, more than two pets says that have more than two. So now more than two is this grouping here and this grouping here. Notice that we don't count two because it said more than two. So now again, my total is right here, the three and the two. So now I got five out of a possible of 20. And now there's my fraction. Take the top divided by the bottom, and that's going to give me 0 0.25. And last but not least, multiply this by 100. And I get my answer, which is just plain old 25%. And that's that. Just like the last one, you got to pay close attention to what the question's asking of you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the frequency table. I hope you found this video both helpful and informative.